Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan. I am the Director of Development and Programming for the Bedford Playhouse. Um, we hope you enjoyed the um, screening of Best Summer Ever. Um, I'm not here to listen to me talk, so I'm going to turn it over to our moderator, uh, Kaori Nakamura. Uh, and also with us tonight are Will Halby. And you guys may recognize uh, Jake Waltuck. I hope so. Uh, so um, I will now, uh, Carrie, it's your show. I'm going to disappear into the background and let you guys. All right. Uh, well, I, I guess we can we can start with, uh, you know, whatever, um, you know, questions I guess maybe the audience might have. Are they able to ask questions? They are actually. I'm going to go over to the other side and field questions for them. Okay. So I'm, I will pass them along to you. So why don't you, if you have a question, why don't you start and I'll collect some questions. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, Will, um, one question that I had was, uh, what, what, who came, who came up with this idea for this, for this movie and the story? Oh, it, it that that is a point of great contention. <laughs> a lot of people will take credit for that. Um, you know, we're such a we're such a crew um, at Zeno. Like everybody's kind of such good friends, and we've all been doing film and theater together for so long. Um, but ideas just kind of bubble up organically in the group, and and the idea of doing a musical. Um, film and kind of going bigger than any movie we have ever done before um, was very just kind of like everybody was excited about it and and in our community Grease and Footloose and High School Musical and all these all these sort of classic uh, high school musical are just so popular and 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 we just we're like we really need to we need to make our own and put a spin on it. It it was it was really amazing. Um, how um, how was the process of um, you know once once you had the story, then you had an idea of you know in terms of you know who or possibly who you were looking for in casting all of those roles. What was that process like? Well, it it, it was a little bit of we you know we we have these characters that we want in the movie, and we and we wrote them sort of very specifically for you know, people that we knew. So Jake, I think is a really good example. Um, Jake's always interested in playing an antagonistic character and, and he, he loves sort of like lurky people like that. And, and, and so it was just like really obvious that uh, Jake would play Cody. And, and, then, and then what's cool is that, you know, we'd kind of talk about story with Jake and workshop lines and, and, and Jake really developed that character. Um, you know, through his own, through his own Jakeness. Um, and, uh, and, and that's true with a lot of, a lot, like I'd say most of the characters in the movie. Um, there were some, uh, so Shannon, um, we, we casted Shannon um, through a, a pretty traditional casting process um, because that was a specific character that needed to, to do very specific things to move the story along. So um, we were so lucky to find nice. Shannon. I mean, she's just, she's the star as far as I'm concerned of that movie. She really is the, the breakout. I, and Jake, of course. She was amazing. And, and yeah. Jake, I think your, your genuine interest in that kind of role really, really came out. And, um, and it was, it was just so, it was so wonderful to, to watch your character in this movie. Um, there is a question. Um, the question is, what is your experience with quote unquote traditional film production and what adjustments did you have to make to achieve the results? Oh, um, it's funny because my, my wife, because we've been making these movies for about 12, 13 years now and every year we'll make, you know, sort of a Xeno movie and they're all in this same sort of idea of just very integrated, um, whimsical and fun movies. And, uh, and, and my wife would say to me once, she said, when are you gonna make a real movie? <laughs> I'm like, these are real movies, these are very real. Um, so I think like my experience is, is this is all I know um, as far as filmmaking goes, um, making movies in this genre with this community. And I wouldn't have it any other way, it's, it's, it's it's the most fun I can imagine having on a movie set. And, and I think people who, uh, who re make regular movies um, and joined our crew would agree to that. 
Um, this incidentally, there's a documentary that we shot of all behind the scenes and the process of making the movie, um, which I'd be happy to share with, uh, with the audience when, uh, if I can get a list or something, um, when it's done. Awesome. Yeah. I think, well, there, there is another question, but just to, um, I guess, piggyback on that other question, that, that first question is, um, you know, for me as an occupational therapist, you know, the one thing that I noticed was, you know, the different types of um, adaptive equipment and, um, you know, assistive technology that was that was used. Um, and so on the set, did you find that there were um, certain adjustments environmentally that needed to be um, to be made or were certain scenes um, modified to to accommodate um, certain certain needs or equipment? Yeah, but I mean, for us, that's just our world. Like, like you know, there's no, there's no sort of like adjustments from any, you know, normal. Like, like everything we do is adapted so that everybody can be included. Um, that's just your, that's just your standard. Yeah. Yeah. It's just our world. And Jake, I think, can speak to that because he he's very involved with, with, uh, uh, with with uh, sort of film and and things like that that are tailored specifically to people with sensory issues. So Jake, do you wanna, you wanna talk about that at all? Okay. Um, well, once upon a time, people with disabilities were hardly noticed, but nowadays we're bringing more and more awareness to these people. Xeno creates an inclusive environment for both people with and without disabilities. But making a film like Best Summer Ever is the is a very very big step. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a question. Oh, there are a few questions. Um, well, the net, there's another. How long does it take to write the scripts? And the answer that Jake had provided was probably a year or months. Yeah, I mean, we we would we sort of batted the idea around for a year so we actually did a play do you remember the play best summer ever jake well, who did you play in the in the in the in the stage version of best summer ever unlike the film i was in a minor role as one of the football jocks right 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 that's right um yeah so we we we, we, <laughs> we did a play version and and kind of played with all the ideas um and batted around and and like i mentioned like it, it evolves you know so so in the middle of shooting you know, Jake will 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 ad lib something, or or he's like, I think Cody would do this, and he'd try something that's completely different than than what we had intended, and it's and it's usually better. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, Jake, how long have you been acting? Because it seems like Will, like you you have known Jake for for some time. You had you had a vision for the character for him, so. I guess my question um, to Jake and also about the other characters, you know, how long have, how long have you been acting? Well, I've been acting since I was at Summit Camp, which is up in Pennsylvania. I've played many roles, beginning with a British soldier in Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. At Summit Camp, I was Peter in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And I played, I also played the man behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. But one of my big steps into acting was as the scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz in my senior year of high school. It made my heart glow. Oh, wow. Then at Zeno Mountain Farm, I was Jack the hippie in Hit the Road Jack. <laughs> I played a surly father in High School Reunion, the musical. I played a Coughlin brother in Bulletproof, the musical. Zeno was also where I got my first big film roles. In Finding Zac Efron, I played the good guy, which was amazing as it catapulted me into the world of film. It's, it really made my heart and soul soar. In Bulletproof, which was a stepping stone to bringing America's attention to Zeno, I played Everett, this conniving lawyer. Back to stage. In Greece, I was Danny Zuko in Summer Nights, the story of Danny and Sandy, which was a prequel to Greece. I played Danny Zuko. In 2015's I Think I Love You, which was about a West Side Story, Romeo and Juliet-esque 
conflict between the Brady Bunch and the Partridge family. I played hero Keith Partridge <laughs> in 2016's Best Summer Ever. As you said, I played a jock. In 2017's Jeff, in 2017's television or something, I played a papa with a pipe. Of course, in Best Summer Ever, the film that was first made in 2017, I played Cody, who I describe as the school meathead. In 2018's Just in Time, a play, a time travel film, I played a time travel show. I played a pessimistic brother who goes back in time. And then there was Jaws, the musical. This is the third time I've played a truly wicked character. In this case, a greedy landlord. And to ace up my acting chops, I used Mark Hamill as the inspiration for the developer's sinister voice. And oh, then, wow. And then in 2020, I was in the cyber play. I was in the cyber play Star Trek Into the Zoomiverse. Very interesting. So now, oh, I almost forgot. In Peter and the Star Catcher, the, uh, this NYU production of this Peter Pan prequel, I played. I played Mac, a sailor. I played General Kelly, who was a, who is this pirate? I wanted to, since my character was more of, was a bit of a thug. I used the troll from Harry Potter. I used the the monsters from Quest for Camelot. And I also used, I also used the guard from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe as inspirations for bringing this guy to life. And in the, the Cape, which was a cautionary environmental tale, I played Professor Wallace, this eccentric scientist who tends to a sick mermaid. But Cody is my huge breakthrough. So it sounds like you've played so many different roles, which you know, I'm, I'm looking and I see now there are two questions. So it, the question starts, it says, is Jake interested in pursuing acting as a career? And what was the biggest challenge during production? I'm, I'm really interested in taking acting as a job. Although I also enjoy screenwriting. The difficult part of playing Cody was figuring out how to get into this character because as an actor, you've got to come out of your comfort zone right. as well as adding your own touch to the character. To play Cody, I had to step into the shoes of this character and I had to give this character some motive, some purpose. He's someone, I wanted to portray this character as someone who's nursed a grudge against Tony for taking his spot as star quarterback. I wanted his motives to be very understandable. Jake, and, Jake would Jake will on set. He'll he'll uh, between shoots. He'll 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 come up with scenarios that aren't even in the script and, and sort of like how would Cody react if 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 you know if 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 Beth tried to kiss him like like he would and he's he's constantly developing his character between shoots and and always sort of. Like like going way deeper than 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 I think it's like being on set with Daniel Day Lewis I think like <laughs> seriously like he really he he becomes Cody um he'll you'll you'll eat dinner with him and he'll he'll speak as Cody you know just constantly you know smoothing the edges of the characters the um well what was so interesting about this too is that um when there is like a, you know, like a big football, um, you know, part of the story and you're thinking about the star, you know, it was interesting how the kicker was the star and it wasn't highlighted onto the quarterback where typically in movies, you know, it's, it's usually the QB. And when Jake first comes out in that scene, it, it was very clear, like in his facial expression, his like body acting that, you know, that that grudge like showed through like toward towards uh you know towards the kicker um hold on there's a question that just came through um oh where where can the doc where can the documentary um the one that you mentioned will um when will it be viewed 
uh, we're we're just putting captions on it right now and and color correction and that stuff. Um, but I think in another week or so it'll be ready, and I'm happy to share a link with everybody. Um, so yes, and and to your point about the kicker, like we thought it would be really fun to have the kicker be the star, you know, and and yeah. and, and it just it just was like it's it was just sort of like a fun way to twist it up. Um, plus, if 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 he was the quarterback, he would have to. It, it you can't you, you have to really work hard to be the quarterback and because his commitment wasn't so much with football it made sense right. he just had this gift that he was so almost like you know he fell into being a star rather than something that he really pursued yeah no and, and his and his the that little side the side story about him was you know was great that kind of made it all flow yeah. um there's another question oh jake what is your favorite movie oh boy Oh boy! This is <laughs> Plenty. Is there one favorite? How much time do you have? <laughs> Plenty. Um, one of my favorites is The Wizard of Oz because this role in my senior year of high school was a stepping stone to propelling me into the world of acting. Oh, and I forgot to mention another stage performance I was in. A camper in Welcome to Camp, and I played the King of the Martians in Martian Mayhem, the musical. I'm also a huge fan of Disney films. I'm also a huge mm -hmm. fan of Pixar and I love comedies, fantasy, Western and sci-fi. Oh, wow. So it's like a whole range. So if you had to pick one, what would it be? Favorite live action film, Wizard of Oz. Oh, cool. And favorite animated film, it's really hard to pick, but probably mm. I know there's so many. Well, a tie between Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King. Favorite mm. Pixar film would have to be favorite Pixar film would have to be mm, Toy Story 3. These are those are deep stories with a lot of emotion. Um, oh, there's another. Let me get to that. Um, oh, I also love oh, comedy. Oh, so there's a comment slash question. This was such a great film. What do you hope audiences will take away from it? This is for like Will and for Jake. Um, I'll take a stab at that. Um, it's 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 sort of like we were talking about before. Um, offline um that that the you know the whole idea of it of of making a teen musical that really leaned into the the tropes and the and the and the storylines of of other teen musicals was to was to have the audience see something that they were familiar with but have it look completely different and have it look like something they've never seen before um so we've really wanted to sort of just 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 play with that idea of 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 something familiar yet totally alien um and i think like we we sort of a, a, a running tagline of our project has been we want to we want to change the world while singing and dancing um and and the idea of we wanted people to to really think about what the world could look like um if we were more inclusive and uh but not to not to you know to hit anyone over the head with it just just sort of like let let that idea simmer by by showing people what what a world could look like rather than you know saying this is what you should do or this is how you should think we wanted to to really that and that's that's what's great about the musical you know genre in general is it's it's so playful and and there's this suspension of disbelief for the music i mean in the middle of the of a, of a scene like people start singing and dancing and everyone knows the words and it, and and it, you just accept that um so we wanted that same sort of spirit to be like yes we're just going to accept um this world as as a functioning normal amazing world even though it looks like a different world a world that we've never seen before well let's just say that best summer ever i hope people can take away from it is that we not only can raise the bar for inclusivity and disability awareness, but also cinema and art can push the boundaries of our capabilities. Just as Bulletproof is a love letter to classic Western films, 
Best Summer Ever is, of course, a love letter to classic high school movies. And it proves that even classic genres can be inclusive when it comes to people with and without disabilities. That's right. Yep. Oh, there's an, okay, there's another question. These are good questions. Um, what is your feeling about how people with differences have been portrayed in mainstream movies and television shows? That's a great question. It is, um, you know, and, yes. and I think it's, it's typically, uh, you know, the, the, the typical movie storyline that involves disability is um, a movie that's usually really sappy and, and inspirational. Um, it all too often stars someone without a disability uh, portraying someone with a disability. Um, and it's all about the disability. Um, you know, it's like this, this is their, their challenge and their arc is overcoming it. Or even worse, it's, it's the impact that being around them has on a non-disabled person. And it's, 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 you see these things over and over and over again. And we wanted to flip that completely by making a fun movie that isn't about disability, that, that's, that is entirely inclusive and stars people with disabilities. Um, so yes, the, the Hollywood has failed. Um, you know, 20% of the world um, or in the United States uh, of people identify as having a disability. Um, yet I think it's, it's less than 2%, maybe even 1% um, of roles are people with disabilities. And, and of those, most of those are, you know, portrayed by people without disabilities pretending to have a disability. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Hollywood has, 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 has failed. It's, 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 uh, you know, for all the, all the backslapping Hollywood's giving themselves about being more diverse and, and, uh, they, they have a long way to go when it comes to disability. Yeah. I, I just, one thing, you know, that I will say, and I, I started to talk about it offline, but, um, you know, one thing that's notable and that was also, you know, while watching it was just, you know, very, very, it was like reality to me was that it's not only um, diverse with, you know, the, with those with disabilities and those with not, not you know, neurotypical and, 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 and not, um, but also just, you know, just racial diversity as well. It was, it was, it was almost like you just, you saw, you saw everyone. And, um, and like you said, it just had that, that fun element to it and the focus was on the story and people's feelings and not on yeah 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 um, i think like if you look at like the, the arc of, of gay characters over the last you know 20 years or so um you know it, you know in the 80s and 90s it was like if there was a gay character it was all about them being gay and today right. with gay characters who just happen to be gay and it's not part of the challenge or the story it's just that's who they are yeah. just, it's the real world right. Um, right. and we would like to see a world where where you know people just happen just like people happen to have disabilities in the real world like there should that should be demonstrated on film yes amazing um there's another question here it says does zmf ever see themselves doing some sort of episodic series uh not right now. I mean, we're pretty burnt out from, from filmmaking because this was such a beast of a project. And then we got hit with the pandemic because um, it actually, we finished it a little over a year ago and we were going to go to South by Southwest uh, 2019 or 2020 and, um, and then the pandemic hit. So it's, it's been a rough year for filmmaking in general, but, uh, but definitely a, a sort of a whiplash for us. Um, but we, we, we talked about it. I think uh, the way it would look would be um, making a movie and then an episodic series about the, the making of the movie, like, like sort of like what it takes, like a, an episode about the script writing, an episode about casting, and then the development of the project um, throughout. So, Will, you mentioned, you know, that the making of this film wrapped up before the pandemic. How soon before the pandemic did it wrap up? Because I can only imagine, you know, the bonds that you've all, I mean, you may have had bonds already, like some of you prior to, you know, making this movie, but I just think, you know, as a group and just spending all that time together and then to have to, you know, end and then also have those, you know, those limitations to not, 
be together and see each other. Um, you know, what was that experience like for both of you? Jake? Any questions? No, do you want to talk, do you want to talk you about want, what, what yeah, the experience? The well, well, when we were doing Best Summer Ever, it was like entering another magical realm. And usually they've put up a, they put up a fake set when they film something. But when we were filming in an actual high school, it was like entering a real high school. It was like I was entering the film itself. When I played Cody, I was able to come out of my comfort zone to play the character I wouldn't usually play. Mm. So my character's a bit of a stooge and a bully. But to reiterate, I had to get into this character's corner. Shooting the film, being in the film was at some times challenging. Shooting in the rain, in the scene with the quarrel between Tony and the jocks and staying up late past midnight to do the nighttime scenes, especially the finale. Right, the, the dance and also the, the very end you're referring to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was, it was four in the morning when we wrapped the finale scene. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we stayed up all night long for the, for the scene, the dance scene in the street. Um, yeah, I'll just about the, about, the, about COVID and yep. our community, it's been it's been tough. I think I think um, sadly uh, disability can be isolating um, in general, but in a pandemic, uh, it it's been worse. And 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 we've been we've been doing cyber Zoom uh, camps throughout this entire. In fact, Jake's wearing one of our cyber camp t-shirts um just to stay connected because because our we are we are a tight crew at Zeno Mountain Farm um like family so uh so it's 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 been really hard I think uh it's been really hard and 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 rolling out the movies particularly this one that really needs to be seen with an audience um in a theater you know sharing energy and and experiencing that um has been has been really sad to not be able to do that. So I'm really looking forward to, to showing it to people live. Yeah, I think it will be amazing. You know, I, it, I think in these times, even though there's been, um, you know, a lot of progress made over the last year, little over a year, it's been, um, you know, it's, it's been very challenging and, um, you know, and, and traumatic at, at times. And, uh, you know, at, at this time right now, I wasn't sure if, you know, we were all going to be live, you know, um, together to see this or if it was, if it was going to be Zoom also. So I think we're on our way. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I just, I just look forward to, um, you know, more people being able to see this movie in the way that you, you know, wanted it to happen. Yeah, we'll come to the Bedford Playhouse um, as soon as we can and do a big blowout screening there for everyone. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, that'll be super fun. We can't wait. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that, Will. Good. No, record. I mean, I've already talked You're, you're on record. record. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, I want to I wanna just say thank you to all you guys for taking your time this evening. Um, thank you. Great. Jake, you've got me thinking about Keith Partridge now, which I haven't done in quite a long time. <laughs> um, and we have recorded tonight, so we will be sharing the, the recording. Um, if there's any part of it that anybody wants to revisit, um, it'll be up on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Um, and certainly, um, I should mention also, Will, if there's any links you want to share to direct people to other content, please feel free to forward it and we'll share that as well. Um, Kaori, thank you so much. For, thank for you. Uh, and this Such is really great. We've, uh, and I just want to mention we have, um, we have one more program left in our Autism Awareness um, Week. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're doing a series about autism and adulthood. Um, it's been a really great week so far. This is just another great event that we've had in a whole string of them. So uh, I'm sure it will go out with, uh, with a bang. Um, so we really appreciate everybody's time for this and we look forward to the next project. Yay. Thank you. I, this, is, this is amazing. I loved, I loved meeting you and um, it, the movie is, is amazing. Thank you. It's great to meet you too. Good to see you, Jake. Thank you. In a minute. Yeah. Have a great night, everybody. Yes, you stay, too. Stay Good well. Night. Night. Thank you. Thank you.